Hello, my name is Juan Antonio and the purpose of this video is to show the details of the project. The objective of the project is the design of the electronics of an economical pH meter with an isolated 420 signal showing the capabilities of a model peak system F876A. This pH meter will measure the pH of a solution using a standard probe and will display this information on the screen. Also, it will generate a 420 signal according to this measure. To solve this problem, we will divide it into four parts. The input stage, composed of the circuitry that adapts the signal coming from the probe to the input of the processing stage, the processing stage where the input data is converted into a, a result on a screen and into a signal to the output stage, the output stage that receives the signal from the processing stage and turns it into a 420 signal, and finally, the power stage composed of all the power sources needed. Although we have divided the problem in parts, there are strong dependencies among them, so changes applied to any of these stages will lead us to review the previous designs of the others. Considering that the processing stage is the most complex, we will start with this one. The processing stage may be represented by this schematic. The blue lines represent the data bus. The pink lines are the control bus. The four white squares represent four buttons. The microcontroller used will be a 16F876A that has enough lines and resources. It is connected by several lines with a MCP4921 that converts the digital signal into an analog signal that will be used by the output stage to generate a 420 signal. The input signal to this stage will come through the A0 pin that can receive a signal between 0 and 5 volts. So, this defines the output of the input stage. We will use a 4 lines LCD screen to have more space, using the last line to show the function of each button. The buttons will be closed and under the LCD like this. This stage defines all the menus and options that the pH meter will have. In our case, we will have a main menu that would allow to calibrate the pH meter using one or two points. It will also have the option to restore some factory settings to avoid a malfunction in case of data corruption and a 420 test that makes possible that the user can generate a current value between 0 and 25 mA to adjust the output cost. The calibration menu should also allow to change the calibration buffers to let the user employ any pH buffer solution. The probe has a linear dependency between the pH and the generated millivolts, so if the user accessed only the first point during the calibration, uh, the processing stage will use this data to move the whole line upwards or downwards according to the measure point. If the user accessed two points, a new line with a new slope can be processed. So, uh, the order of the menus will be the following. The main screen will show something like this. The first line shows the pH value and the millivolts coming from the probe. The only option we have here is to enter the menu. If we do so, we will see the main menu. The first option leads us to the calibration menu. In this menu, the second and third options can be used to change the value of the buffer solutions, showing screens like this one. However, if we have chosen the first option, we will have entered into the calibration sequence showing this screen. We can abort this sequence at any time, pressing Exit. If we press OK, we will see a screen similar to the main screen. We should press OK when we can see a stable measure. During this, we have the first point and we are asked to finish the calibration with one point or not. If we choose No, we will see something like this. Once we have inserted the probe in the buffer solution, if we press OK, we will see something like this. When we see stable readings, we should press OK to finish the calibration sequence with two points showing this. After a few seconds, we will turn back to the main screen. It also may happen that the calibration process fails due to a very high or low calculated slope. If this happens, 
The data acquired to calculate the new line will be ignored and we will see this screen. Finally, we have to show the screen that we will see if we choose the testing option and the screen that we will see if we choose to apply the factory settings. If we choose OK, we will see for a while this message. The measured points will be stored in the EEPROM memory as it is shown. The value of the analog to digital converter of the peak corresponding to the first point is carried up into two bytes and it is stored in the lowest EEPROM positions. Following this value, the value of the pH buffer corresponding to the first point is also cut up into two bytes and stored in the EEPROM. The same is done with the coordinates of the following point. The buffer values inserted by the user are stored in the following addresses. As we can see, the buffer values are repeated. It happens because the first values are used to calculate the pH readings using the measured millivolts, and the second are used to store the values that the user considers the calibration buffers should have. These values override the others after calibration. This double storage allows the user to change the buffer values without altering the measure. We have chosen an RS proof with the code 425-803. The manufacturer gives us the characteristic line as follows. As we can see in the figure, the manufacturer shows that the signal generated by the proof will never exceed 500 millivolts in absolute value. So we will have these limits as the input range of the input stage. Considering a value a bit higher than the highest the input can show has some advantages. The first advantage is that any value from the proof will never exceed the limits. And the second one is that we will avoid that a linearity error close to the limit of the range could distort the measure. The schematic of the input stage could be like this. We can use an instrumentation amplifier to interface the proof. The gain resistance of this amplifier will be variable to allow adjusting the span or gain of this stage. Once the signal of the proof has been amplified, we should add an offset before arriving to the analog to digital converter to ensure that the signal is always positive. Acid substances produce positive values, but basic solutions produce negative values, so having 500 millivolts as an input should produce an output of 2.5 volts coming from the instrumentation amplifier. The same could be said for negative values changing the sign. This means that we must add 2.5 volts to the amplified signal to make it suitable to be sent to the analog to digital converter of the peak. And this is what we do with the operational amplifier. It has a variable resistance to adjust the value of the offset. The adjust method would be the following. Unplug the proof from the pH meter. Place the voltmeter red proof on the test point 1 and black proof on the test point 0. Place the jumper on the B position. Adjust R5 till we measure 2.5 volts. Connect a volt source to the pH meter. Adjust it to 0. Place the jumper on the A position. Increase the volts coming from the source slowly till we have an input of 500 millivolts. Adjust R1 till we measure 4.5 volts. The input stage is adjusted. The schematic of the output would be the following. We will use an isolation amplifier that receives the signal from the digital to analog converter. This isolated signal goes to an operational amplifier that basically converts the voltage signal into a medium pulse signal. R7 allows setting the gain of the output stage while R9 sets the offset. To adjust this stage we will use the option of the main menu that allows to set the output to a defined value. We must use two independent power sources. Both of them should be dual. One of them should be of 5 volts, positive and negative, and the other should be of 15 volts. The first source will supply the input stage and the processing stage, while the 15 volt source will be used just in the output stage. 